calling St. Paul, St. Barnabas, and anybody online who can hear me because I'm making a rather loud noise. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Sunday, the end of July, my goodness. And what have we got? Summer weather. We've got summer weather, finally, yeah. My gosh. Well, for those of you who've been here a little earlier, you might have seen some interesting pictures from last week's escapade at what I'm um, told was a wonderful event, and it's Hunmanby Beach, which I managed to get right, not been, but I'm planning to go next time, and we're trying to think of how we can go again. So um, please don't, uh, don't miss out on that. Now, if you've just come in, there's some table space over here. You can come and join in, do some decorating if you'd like to. Um, for those of you who are at home, you might need some bits of paper and some pens because we're going to be active. And some string. And some string. Yeah. Now, our opening words today are, to, uh, are linking with our theme. Last week, we did the belt of truth. And there's this magnificent truth down here. And this week, we're moving onwards. So if we can have our first words up, here we are. Please join me and say these. They're on the screens. And if you're facing that way, you can see up on the screen behind you as well. So let's say together. Let the mighty strength of the Lord make you strong. Draw your strength from him. That's our theme for today. Now, we're going to have our first song, which is let all creation sing before the Lord. But there are several items needed for our story today, which are hidden around the church. Now, Debbie's going to come and, and assist, but in fact, um, how many are there? There's there's eight, right. There are eight things hidden around the, around the church. There's none in the cafe area, so they're all in here. Um, I appreciate you don't know what you're looking for, but that's the idea. But they have got a little pink post-it on them. Oh, so you've given a clue. That's a bit of a clue. Oh, they don't well, do that. Well, otherwise I don't know what they're, they're looking for. True, <laughs> true. Yeah, well, I suppose at least in the games, you know whether it's a lead piping or a something, don't you? So um, if you'd like to stand and sing, you're fine. If you want to sit and sing, fine. But um, if you'd like to go on a hunt, please see if you can find the things. Keep hold of them, and we'll bring them up at the end of the song. Okay? Let's sing.
Please have a seat. There's wonderful words in that, aren't there? Words you, until recently, how many of us knew there was a narwhal? I, we've just been, we've had so much explanation about and, and information to help us to understand our planet and everything that God's made. So we've got this bigger, bigger vision. Now, you might have seen one or two of us scurrying around rather dramatically there. So I think we need some help. Would you like to come up and bring what you've, what you've found? They're not what I was thinking. There's no rope and there's no lead piping. So I don't know what we're hunting for. Here, what have we got? Would you like to just come up onto here? Right, I'll take that off because that was just to help you find it. What have you found? Do you know what they are? Elbow pads. Sh elbow pads, yeah. Are they elbow pads or shin pads? Oh, they're elbow Shin pads, right. But you could have similar ones, couldn't you? So can you just hold those now? So what do you use those for? When do you wear them? When you are on a bicycle. So it protects you, does it, from yes. getting a bang? Did you see that big bang in the, in the Commonwealth Games yesterday on the bikes? Oh, that looked painful. What have you got? An umbrella. Umbrella? So what might one use that for? Uh, to keep you dry in the rain. Good idea. Right, thank you very much. So that's protecting you. Ah! I shall fix our belt of truth. I'm speechless. For those of you who are looking on the camera, well hidden is the collapse of the most beautifully made belt of truth. There's a sermon in that, Toby. <laughs> right, what, what have you got? Do you know what it is? <laughs> right, well, should we open it up? Right, I need somebody who's oh, near, nearly as old as me to tell us. Who's going to... Oh, Rachel knows. Rachel, hang on. You have kids near the fire, it protects them. So you would use it for a fire? Yeah. Right. So, you're the fire. Put that in front, and then if people are playing around here, they don't fall into it. Where did you find that? Uh, Chris Woodcock. Chris Woodcock's got a fire guard, right. Brilliant, right. I think we could pop that one across there as well. That's good, thank you. Oh, we've got two. What have we got? A mask. A mask. What is that? Oh, that's a beautiful mask. What does that do? Um, it helps you when um, you don't want to get germs. That's a very good point. Yeah. Right. Can you hold that and take that? And what have you got? A helmet. When do you wear that? Do you wear that when you go to school? On your bicycle? All oh, right. So it'll stop your head getting hurt. So it protects your head. Right, good. Well, you wear it even if you don't know all about it. That's great. Here we come. Down you come. That's it. I think you can give me the... I'll take that and you just pop back to that. That's it. What have you got? Um, I've got some gloves. Some gloves? Yeah. What, what do they do then? Um, they keep your hands warm. Right. So you're not wearing them today then? No. Yeah. We wouldn't wear them today, but they protect you from when it gets very cold. Or possibly even very wet, but they're rather good ones, those. And what have you got? Are we? You're going to come Sunglasses. Here? Some glasses. Are, are you going to model them for us? You want to hold that, right? Okay. You hold the microphone. <laughs> and we'll put the sunglasses on. There we are. Oh. <laughs> are they in the right place? Oh. oh. No. <laughs> I think we know what those are for, don't we? So when do you wear sunglasses? Is it when it's bright? I wear. Yeah, it's when it's very bright. <laughs> that was a good noise, wasn't it? Thank you. Oh, and we've got one more. Wow. What's this one? Sun cream. It's what? Sun cream. Sultan Kids Sun Cream 50 Plus Extra Water Resistant. We all need bottles of that one. So when do you put that on? When, when would mummy put that on? 
when it's a hot day and you're outside and you're in the paddling pool. Maybe. That sounds pretty good. So that's going to protect your skin. Right. Thank you very much. Well done for finding the last one. That's brilliant. Well done. Well, you might have got a vague hint as to what we're talking about today. But some of those are freeing you to do things and some of those are restricting you. But today we're talking about something called a breastplate. And my helpful assistant at the rear is going to assist. Oh, you've done one. The, in, the, in, the, in the Bible story that we're going to look at today, it talks about the breastplate of righteousness, but I thought we'd better find out what a breastplate was. We know what, well, we think we know what a belt is. So a breastplate, has anybody got any ideas what a breastplate is? Close. On the, the skeleton in its arms and then there's the sternum. The sternum. Now, I haven't got a picture of that one, so you'll just have to stand and model for me on that one. So, um, there are three, there we are, here's our, here's our model. Thank you very much, Andy. <laughs> well done. He's starring in a play all this week at the Theatre Royal, if you didn't know. See him afterwards for arrangements for tickets. Breastplate. There's three kind of official ways of looking at it. The first one is a kind of metal plate that you wear for defense when you are for defense of your chest because inside here is vital organs. And vital organs mean if somebody gets you there, you could be dead pretty quickly. So that's a traditional armor, um, a breastplate to protect you from wounds from swords particularly. And then one which I didn't know, but then I'm not a horse person. It's called a breastplate when you have a set of straps on the front of a horse to hold the saddle steady. How many people knew that one? Anybody ride a horse? Anybody ever ridden a horse? Chris. Chris rides a horse. Chris? 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 Chris, did you know it was called that? You did. Starman. So that's what, that helps you, that saves you, doesn't it? And the third one is a really old one. It's a, a special unit that was worn. It's called vestment here. That's a posh term for a bit of like jewelry-ishy thing that you wear. And it was the Jewish high priests and they had 12 gemstones in them to represent the names of the tribes of Israel. So every time... Hang on, hang on, I'm coming. If people have treatments for cancer, radiotherapy, they will have a breastplate over you to protect the radiance of the beams from radiotherapy. Whoa. That's a brilliant one. Well done, Rachel. I need to change that, don't I? So we've got four. That's a very special one. So you're having the treatment uh, to the certain place, but you don't want to have it everywhere else. Hmm. Change the second page, Toby. So. That's amazing. So I think that gives us a bit of an idea about what we're going to talk about today. But first of all, we're going to sing our next song, which is about God being a great big God. Now, are you going to come and do the actions? Good girl. Anybody else going to come and do some actions? Anybody like to help, assist? Don't knock the poor model over just yet. Right. Right. Okay. So that's us too. But the rest of you don't get away with it scot-free. You do need to sing. And uh, if you'd like to stand, if you feel in the mood to stand, if you don't, stay sitting.
terrific. That was wonderful. Please have a seat. Every week in our service, we talk about, or we, ref we reflect on the week that's gone past. We call that by a whole range of things. Sometimes we call it confession. Sometimes we're just talking about it, saying sorry. But uh, we're going to do it today a little bit differently. First of all, I'd like you to think about everything that you feel has gone well this week. Just have a think about the people you've met, nice things that have happened, things you've seen, and let's give thanks to God for that. And we know that God is love and that he loves everything that he's made. He loves you and me. He showed us by his life and tells us in his words that God is not going to turn anyone away who comes to him. But our lives are far from perfect. We know we're not the best we can be, nor the best that God longs for us to be. We make deliberate choices to do what saddens God and spoils our lives and the world. God accepts us as we are, but he loves us too much to leave us there. That's why he asks us to come to his son and to say sorry. So today I wonder if you could pray with your eyes open and use hand shapes for this prayer today. It's a way of bringing all that we've done to God for his forgiveness. So first of all, I'd like you to make a fist. And we're sorry for the times we have got angry with other people. And then we're going to point away from ourselves with our index finger. We're sorry for the times we have blamed others and seen things wrong in others without recognizing how much is wrong in ourselves. Bring your hand into your chest. We're sorry for the times that we have kept things selfishly to ourselves and not been prepared to give to those who need our help over our mouth. We're sorry for the foolish words we have spoken which have hurt other people, our eyes. We are sorry that we have deliberately chosen not to see the good things we could have done to help others, our ears. We're sorry for the times we've not listened to the cries of those who are poor or who suffer injustice. And now hold your hand out with the palm up. It's as if you're waiting to receive something. Jesus says, if you're tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. So we bring all that we are to Jesus, all our sins, all our failures to love, Thank you that you died for us so that we might be forgiven and start a new life in the power of your Holy Spirit. And as a way of remembering that it's through that cross, now with your other finger, your other hand, trace the shape of the cross on your hand and say with me, our sins are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven for Jesus' sake. For Jesus' sake. We're now going to celebrate that forgiveness with a song that talks of how God gave us Jesus and the cross. 
And during that time, um, we'd like one person from each table to come and pick up a pack of goodies from Debbie in the corner. Please have a seat. Deb, can you just explain why, why strange things have appeared on the table? So, on our tables, um, we've got a picture of a Roman soldier. Sorry, this should have been on the slide, but if I hold it up like this. Um, so, this is what a Roman soldier's armour would have looked like, and it's what we're attempting to recreate over the coming weeks. We've got our, ours is probably a little bit less robust, um, but definitely more blingy than the real thing. But um, basically they had a woolen tunic and then um, a breastplate made out of steel, um, their helmet, a huge um, shield, uh, sandals, and of course the belt. Uh, so last week we made the belt. So today we, we need to make the breastplate. So you've all got some cardboard on your table, so if you could cut that up into pieces about this big, sort of a couple of inches, 
centimeters, uh, five centimeters by seven and a half, something like that, and then cover it in your foil. And then we're going to um, overlap them and strap so them. It will look down like here. that. So it will look like that when you've covered it. Not that big though, because our models, our models yeah. a bit, a bit weeny. Our petite model needs a slightly <laughs> smaller size, but don't worry, we'll, we'll get there. Um, so. There are also colouring sheets on your tables. So if you could all colour those in, because they're for an activity in a, um, a few weeks' time. So we need all of those coloured in as well, please. Thank you. Right. So lots of pre-preparation here. Right, I'm going to give you two minutes, two minutes of noise to talk about how you're going to do it. And then we're going to have the reading. Um, the Roman soldiers coming. They're going to copy some extra sheets for you. I think this is going to be the crinkliest sermon ever, probably. Were you sorry? Is there a different pair of scissors? I don't know. Um. I do the notices. Yeah. Right. All oh, right. Have you got an adult who could cut for you? on your table. Uh, I do on my while, you're, while you're busy scruffling bits of paper and things, instead of having the reading just yet, we're going to do some notices. I think that might be a bit better model for the operation. Firstly, Firstly, if you're hoping to go to the women's weekend, today is the last day to pay your cash. <laughs> Ian, can you put the pictures up from Hunmanby, please? No? Right. All right. Okay. Right. Right. And if you're a visitor here today, can you fill in one of these and tell us who you are? Is Liz there? Right, is anybody finished? Hands up if you finished one table's done. I hope you're doing this at home. Got yourself all sorted out with bits of string and making this masterpiece. If anybody's not got pictures, can they put their hands up and Debbie will just bring one for you now. That one over there. Debbie, table here. Excellent, good. How are we doing? Two minutes left.
no, no. You don't bring them up yet. You bring them up um, at the end of the final song. So we'll tell you when. Claire, come and join us. Hi. Can you stop crinkling paper now, please? If you haven't quite finished, you can do it in the first verse of the song. Or if you're going to keep doing it, then doing it exceptionally quietly, please. They do that at cycling, don't they? They say, shh. That was a good move. Um, so we've got the reading from Ephesians Sorry, 6, that. Uh, starting at verse 10. The armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full, full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. This is the word of the Lord.
Dead. Oh. oh, wow. Shall I start again? No. Um, instead of um, being like the Romans, we're called to be like Jesus. Putting on the armor of God means gaining ourselves instead as we receive his good gifts. Putting on the armor of God isn't a striving to know the right things. It's not a striving to act in the right way. It's not a striving to believe the right things. It's an exercise in receiving gifts. Here's my um, favorite part of the sermon, a, a Lord of the Rings analogy. Basically, we're all Frodo. God the Father is like Bilbo Baggins, and Jesus is the Mithril. I think that's what Tolkien probably had in mind with that. Jesus is our breastplate of righteousness. If we look back through Ephesians, we'll see that Jesus himself is also our peace. Jesus is our truth. He is our faith. He is our salvation. Jesus is the word, and he is one with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is our righteousness. If we want to learn what righteousness is, we look to Jesus. It's the classic but all true Sunday school answer. And so we'll have a brief time of discussion now, probably about four to five minutes. Um, you can just uh, talk about what might come freely, but I've got some questions for you to, um, to guide the discussions as well. Um, since we don't have too long, it might be better just to chat with the, the people right next to you rather than the whole table, but uh, whatever's best, really. I'll read the questions out. What about Jesus' way of living do we find most inspiring or challenging? What about Jesus' way of living is most in tune with our world and what is most contradictory to our world? And lastly, we usually think about Jesus' righteousness as saving us from sin. But here Paul wants us to know that um, it helps us withstand evil. So how might it help us withstand evil in our lives as well? Um, it's probably best just to answer one question maybe in the five minutes, uh, but I'll leave it with you. Um, great.
Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm just going to keep talking and um, feel free to join me whenever you're ready. Uh, this morning we will do a lot of talking. We have done lots of talking. I'm doing some talking now. Um, but Jesus' righteousness isn't just something we are called to talk about. It's not something we're just called to know with our minds. It's not even something we're just called to believe with our hearts. Paul is absolutely clear that he wants us to live it out in our daily life. Earlier in his letter to the Ephesians, Paul encourages us to comprehend with all the saints, that's you, what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul wants us to be filled with all the fullness of God. I want that. Um, I imagine most of you want that, but it's uh, quite hard to get our heads around of just what that might look like. And this is really where we should realize that God's righteousness is so massive and so mysterious and so deep and good that we need to spend our whole lives growing into it. It's so big that we can't digest it and eat it in one big bite. We couldn't learn it by watching a few TED Talks. We couldn't even learn it by going through the entire primary school curriculum. We need to spend every day for the rest of our lives learning about God's righteousness. By talking about the armor of God, Paul gives us an example of how we can grow in God's righteousness just a little bit more every day. By putting righteousness on, like putting on armor, like the Roman soldiers, every day we get dressed to face the world. Some days we might just need pajamas, some days we might need a big, thick winter coat, but no matter what the day, Paul wants us to wear the armor of God. The priest and author Tish Harrison Warren says that it's often the unseen and unsung ways we spend our time which form us, such as our reaching for a phone when we first wake up or our rushing through mundane tasks. Instead, he suggests that we use the mundane, the everyday, as a structure to have daily liturgies to cultivate love, peace, and joy. So instead of putting on the armor of God with our eyes closed in prayer, or instead of hurrying through a morning as we get dressed, putting on our clothes, I think, is a great way of prayerfully putting on the armor of God. This armor isn't heavy. This armor isn't a burden. It shouldn't induce fear in us as though we were preparing for a war we might lose. Putting on this armor of God is a work of peace. It should be a work of joy. It should be a work of love. Receiving from Christ should be our first work every day. And here by talking about the armor of God, about this breastplate of the righteousness that is Jesus, Paul is imploring us to begin our days in grace. And grace, I think, is best received in the everyday. So we'll have now our final time of discussion. The questions are, why does living righteously often feel more like a burden than a gift? Which everyday rituals make us vulnerable to evil? How can you use your day-to-day -day living as opportunities to grow in the love of God? Again, I recommend you take one of those questions and spend your time thinking through it. I'll then close in prayer, um, and then I think we'll have some prayers after that.
Okay, I'm going to uh, close in prayer now. Thanks everyone for um, chatting. I had a lovely time on my table. Thanks for the volume. Well, um, dearest Jesus, we thank you for your great grace. Thank you for the gifts that you give. We thank you for the peace that you share. I pray that we would be uh, vulnerable to finding you in the everyday, but also that we would um, create sacred spaces as well to enjoy you. Whether that's sitting quietly, going for a walk, spending time with family and friends, or that you'd teach us about um, living a life that is sacred. We love you and we are grateful. Amen. Good morning. Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. I'm going to share with you now the Maori Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world, your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. From trial to too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you create, created us in your image and blessed us with diverse gifts. During these Commonwealth Games, help us to celebrate the sporting talents bestowed by you. We pray for all the participants and ask that you would give them discipline and purpose, a grateful heart to those who win and grace to the, those who do not gain the prize. We pray that through these games, the Fellowship of Nations may be strengthened in bonds of peace and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to stir us into action as global temperatures increase. Inspire us with ways we can make a difference in our homes, in our church and community, and in the world around us. We pray for justice and fairness for those worst hit by our changing climate, for those living in extreme poverty around the world who are worst hit by the crisis but have done the least to contribute to it and have the 
the fewest resources to implement change. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father God, as we try to make a difference in the world in which we live, help us to care for one another, to take time to listen and to pray for each other, to walk alongside those in need and to share our joy, laughter and tears. We lift before you all those that we know who are grieving for family and friends that they have lost. We think especially of the family and friends of Betty Morgan, and we thank you for her long life, friendship, and the joy that she brought to those who knew her. We pray for the young people traveling to Poland on Thursday for the Frisbee competition. And we pray especially for Ben Lum, who's not very well at the moment, that he will be recovered in time to go. We pray for Isaac Bell, who's got COVID, and we pray for his family as they're isolating. We continue to pray for those we know who are going through major health problems at the moment. And we think especially of Amy, Mia, and Van. Please take a moment to lift those you know who are in need of God's peace and strength today. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for all the young people and leaders who are preparing to go to Crickieth camp. Protect them on their journeys together. Help them to feel your presence, know your love, and encounter you in a new way during their time together. We pray for good weather, new friendships, great teaching and endless joy and laughter together. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And now we're going to join together for the prayer for growth. God our Father, you are, you are the, the source, source of all life and growth. So we so pray, we pray for, for your vision your for our planning, planning your, your wisdom, wisdom in our actions, actions and, and your, your power, power in our witness, that through the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, St. Paul's and St. Barnabas will grow, will grow in numbers, in loving service to Holgate, Lehman Road and the city, and in our love and commitment to Jesus Christ. Amen. The Serenity Prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things that I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. We ask the, all these things in the name of our Saviour. Amen. And now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Toby, for your insights and for, I, I feel released from, um, from the weight of the, the armor of God. I don't know how many others of you 
sometimes feel it's like putting really heavy stuff on to cope with. And I think I feel quite released from that today. Just as the band are coming up, um, just a couple of notices. Joyce prayed for crickets. Some of you have been praying for some months about crickets, and I'd like to tell you, not only have we got one bus going, we've got two buses going. That's an absolute wonderful story. And we've got people from within the church going to be leaders. Um, and it just feels like a fresh start for our, for our teenage groups. So we're absolutely thrilled. So keep praying for good weather and for brilliant times and nobody to fall off cliffs and strange things like that or get ill or, you know, food poisoning or, you know, anything can happen or, you know, push an ice cream in the wrong direction on Crickyeth Beach. But um, please pray for that. If you are hoping to go to the women's weekend, today is supposedly the last day to pay. So if there are many, any of you who actually would like to go and haven't told anybody that you'd like to go, then Claire, who read the reading for us, is here, and um, she can just about cope with one or two other names, I think. Um, so there's still gaps, um, and please ask, and it's going to be great. And if you're very new, then would you please fill in one of these, which tells us your name, and we can put you on the magic list that sends you all the wonderful notices about what's going on here. And you can also pick up uh, what's happening over the summer as well. Well, thank you for um, enjoying, enduring, coping, and having a great time this morning. And for all you've, all you've put into it, we've got one vital thing to do. We've got to build the breastplate. We've got to build the breastplate. So we're going to sing a song, which is called Be Thou My Vision. Now, there might be some of you who've never used the word thou before. There might be. It's, it's not always in school reading books. Um, so it's, we use thou in songs to talk about God. So it's, please, will you be my vision? But because it's thou with a capital letter, we're talking about God. And the other one is art. Save that thou art. That you are is that you exist. So there's two amazing definitions for you there. So um, we're going to attempt to move this magical beast into the middle so we can dress it. And Debbie's going to come and nobly assist on this one. So we're going to sing the song. And if you'd like to bring up your armor, possibly table by table rather than everybody simultaneously, do you think? Or just everybody, yeah. Who are, somebody from the table, bring up your armor. You don't need to bring the pictures, but just the, the armor. And after this, we'll have some final verses and uh, a cup of coffee. So if you'd like to stand and somebody come and bring your armor, be thou my vision. Over to the band. Can we move it? Yeah, come on. But I was, I was going to build it later.
Please have a seat. <clears throat> now, don't panic. That's not what it's really meant to look like. It's just to give you an idea that it will all formulate. Debbie's our wonder designer here, and it's all going to be glued together so that it will hang beautifully. But if you want to arrive early next week and assist in the build, please do. Um, I'm just glad I'm not an armor maker. I really am. Right. Our final prayer is actually going back to those verses we said right at the beginning. Thomas is absolutely gobsmacked with this. He's stopped, he's looking at it, he wants to take part. The last verses are what we said at the start. So let's think about this in the light of what Toby said. And this is not about carrying weight. It's about being released in the grace of God. And it's the mighty strength of God. It's not our strength. It's not our armor dividing us. It's the grace of God and his strength. So let's say these words together. Let the mighty strength of the Lord make you strong. Draw your strength from him. Let us go to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And at home, I hope you're wearing your armor. So if you are, can you send us some pictures? Because that'll be quite special to see. Have a cup of coffee. I think you've all deserved it. Oh, and don't forget to support a little team this evening called the Lionesses. Three o'clock it starts. Four o'clock. Oh, excellent. You've got your armor. Three o'clock. Five o'clock's the match.